Uh, I'd like to stay on the uh, soft side of the infrastructure uh, 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 development here and uh, invite um, uh, perhaps Mr. Uh, Yumkela uh, to come in and also uh, give us a sense as to uh, some of the challenges in practical terms uh, that uh, uh, you want to see uh, to, uh, to f facilitate the development of uh, infrastructure and energy uh, energy and infrastructure investments uh, to unlock uh, the implementation of the uh, CF CFTA and uh, Agenda 2063. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I just stepped down four weeks ago as the Special Representative of the Secretary General and CEO for Sustainable Energy for All. And so I have spent quite a bit of time with colleagues pushing the energy agenda. And in order to achieve uh, this policy coherence globally on an energy revolution, we have been lobbying heavily, first of all, to establish a goal within the new post-2015 development agenda on energy. You know when the Millennium Development Goals were adopted, no reference to energy. It's as if we all took energy for, for granted. Mm -hmm. So we have succeeded that. Next week, they, they will endorse goal number seven, which reads, ensuring affordable, reliable, sustainable modern energy services for all, uh, with three clear targets, universal access to energy, doubling the annual rate of improvement of energy efficiency, and doubling the share of renewables. That SDG, that Sustainable Development Goal, was strongly backed by Africa, African Union, African Development Bank, and others, because many of us have been convinced that in addition to all other kinds of infrastructure required, the lack of energy in Africa was central. We already know from estimates from the World Bank, lack of reliable energy was shaving off about 3% every year of, the, of GDP in a number of countries, some even more. And we know you cannot have that in, uh, diversification into in industry without affordable, reliable energy source, hopefully cheap source. So. First point is we've been able to establish that goal. We believe that will trickle down to countries now. They have a good benchmark to see targets they have to approach in order to get energy access to their countries. It's very interesting that the new president of the African Development Bank, who took over again four weeks ago, the first retreat he has done last week was on energy, a new deal on energy for Africa. Energy connects to agribusiness, value addition. Energy connects to beneficiation and value addition to minerals and raw materials because we need to create wealth and jobs in Africa, not just trading in raw, raw commodities and so on. So we're very pleased that this agenda continues. Now, what are we trying to do practically in Africa to make it happen? We've come up with this concept, Donald Kabaruka, myself, Aliko Dangote, and Tony Alumelu. We came up with a concept of African Energy Leaders Group to deal with some of the uh, issues that uh, uh, the Director General of UNCTAD raised. How do you get policy coherence nationally, but more importantly, in the region? Energy infrastructure, these, we've talked to some companies for countries like Sierra Leone, Togo, and so on. 50 megawatts is interesting, but it's too small for a big investor that wants to come in. But if you look at a regional market, 350 million people, maybe then it makes sense. But to do that, you have to do everything that uh, the Director General said. National policy coherence, regional policy coherence, but more importantly, we think the leaders should, should begin to make energy deals. And so we've created this new platform, African Energy Leaders. We've set up the first one in West Africa uh, to be led by President uh, Ouattara <laughs> and uh, President Mahama, together with uh, President Buhari. Meaning, get a group of countries that are contiguous, that have an interest in creating an integrated energy market, which means you need interconnection, yeah. You need gas pipelines, and we chose initially West Africa, but next to them, you put now business guys who are willing to invest, bankers and so on, and the secretariat for this will be hosted in the African Development Bank. We've already raised some money to finance the secretariat, and it's not different from what the European Union did. Four or five countries started with coal and steel. Then they expanded and added other commodities and added other nations. You need these leaders to make political deals to get these big infrastructure projects moving. Yes. Uh, otherwise, the bureaucracy will kill these initiatives. And we're talking big transformative energy projects. 
And of course, you need the ADB for the risk, risk guarantees and all the de-risking instruments, and IFC and others as well. We want to replicate the same in East Africa. Mozambique, Tanzania, Kenya, Ethiopia. Integrated energy markets, which allow Africa to integrate gas with hydropower or with wind in Kenya. That way they become self-sufficient in energy, but they begin to use the gas to produce LPG, to produce fertilizer, as they also export LNG. So this is our new concept, but it's a public-private platform. We've set up the one in, um, in uh, West Africa, and as, I, as you see, it's presidents, and of course we're learning from East Africa to do the rail. They had to have the president sit down and say, you minister of finance, you will do the following on your side of the border, and this guy will do the same here within three months. Otherwise, those deals do not happen. And it is not dissimilar from what happened in the EU. It took the EU many decades to develop institutions and uh, uh, trade protocols to get cross-border infrastructure projects. Of course, they have 30, 40 years advantage, but we can do the same. Absolutely. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yumkela. I think uh, this is an important agenda. Uh, a cross-border project, infrastructure uh, project, it, it's hard stuff. It's not easy to do. But it should be done precisely for the reasons that uh, you've mentioned. And I think uh, your initiative to set up this uh, leaders group in West Africa and followed by East Africa is very appropriate. Because once you've created that framework, then you have developers, private participants that will come in and do, you know, put projects together to finance them and invest equity. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor.